What's going on, everyone? You are now tuned in to the PA Power Hour, and I'm Jeff Ups, and I'm joined by someone special tonight. We got Dustin Hawkinsmith, Penn Live, and uh, Dustin, you and I have been talking a lot about the Super 32 and what's in store for Pennsylvania wrestlers. So uh, I'm curious to, to get your take on some of these things because I know you're more versed in the District 3 wrestlers, but man, we got a lot of wrestlers from all across Pennsylvania. So Dustin, thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Man, it's, it's great to be here. And I, I've, I've been trying to do my homework and catch up with all these other Pennsylvania hammers who are going to be there who aren't in my backyard. And man, there are some really fascinating uh, guys there and some fascinating weight classes starting right at the top. So I'm pumped to talk about it. You know, you and I talked about uh, Bo Bassett and you know what, what he's capable of um, winning a world title and then coming to, to Super 32. You know, winning at Flows, who's number one, then winning at, at True Power, and now he is the number one seed at 106. So we're going to start right there at 106 because we got a long ways to go uh, when we talk about all the Pennsylvania wrestlers that are going to be here at the Super 32. 106 has had some type of, uh, I would say, a little bit of intrigue to it because originally Barrett Jordan was the top seed, and he's now up at 113. But the, the question on everyone's mind is, is Knox coming down – to 106 because it's been reported by Flo and by Pat Minio that he is he is supposedly coming down to 106 to try to face Bo, but right now he is still in the the seedings at number three uh, at 113 pounds. So if that is the case, we're going to have a, a, a super match there potentially if that does happen. Um, but for right now, with Jordan going up to 113 what that does is that makes Bo Bassett the one seed and Nathan Desmond from Becca the two seed so uh, Dustin I know you're familiar with Bo um, but what were your initial thoughts when you saw this the seedings and and uh, you know especially with Knox kind of rumored to be coming down yeah I mean I think I saw the same thing that you saw with Bo being the number two seed which is hard to wrap your head around considering everything that he's done specifically over the past calendar year, but I do, I think, get the logic that Barrett Jordan was an Ohio State uh, champ. He was a year ahead of Bo. He had certain achievements that Bo just hasn't had the opportunity to get yet, but I don't think there'd be any circumstance right now where I would be betting against Bo Bassett to win a tournament. And obviously nothing really changes now. We'll see if Knox is formally placed in the 106 pound bracket maybe we could, maybe the weigh-in has to happen in order for that to be confirmed but we've seen a lot of flux right now one thing just in general about the super 32 that i wasn't familiar with before was just the idea of weight and this being a one day weigh-in and guys having some incentive to make a make kind of a mega cut to get down to wherever they want to go because they know they don't have to hold it for too long but uh we'll see what happens with knox and uh barrick jordan whether that was a case of uh, trying to get a different bracket, uh, or maybe 106 was too much for him. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, you're 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 right in that sense that it's you know, is it weight? Um, is it you know, is it something where I I don't know because I agree with you and and I think you know Willie Saylor uh, is is the first year he's seeding the tournament um, and I, I can't think of anyone better to to seed it just because he has the pulse on all the the high school wrestlers in the nation. Um, but Willie, you know, I'm, I'm sure his analogy is, look, Barrett Jordan has, has won high school tournaments. Um, Bo Bassett is still in, you know, in eighth grade, although he has won a world title in, in cadets. He has, um, you know, competed at high levels um, before. I can, I can see the argument, right? But what that puts in a, a kind of particular, you know, peculiar situation is Nathan Desmond from Becca. Because these guys have gone back and forth, um, you know, and I, I know their history pretty extensively. They actually wrestled in the Super 32 finals in, in middle school division with Bo Bassett winning in overtime. Of course, if you saw True Power in 2020, that was a match that Bo Bassett won. Um, I think it was like 13-7 was the final score or something like that. It was a wild match. Desmond had him on his back. Um, you know, they were they were kind of back and forth, uh, but Bo was able to out, outstand, you know, out, outlast him in that go but really i think nathan desmond is is the one that people are not quite talking uh, enough about you know it is it is all bow but i think desmond's going to be you know i think he's going to bring it um and you just look at the seeds and i think that's 
that shows with, with him being the, the second seed here. Uh, Cooper Hillen, who is actually from Tennessee, but he goes to school at Wyoming Seminary, um, he's the number three seed. So you got three guys from Pennsylvania schools, you know, two guys from Pennsylvania that are going to be wrestling um, for a Super 32 belt. And then let's not forget state champ Louis Gill from Hickory. You know, Louis Gill's a guy who um, had a, an untraditional route to a state title last year in Double A, and um, you know ends up winning a state title. He is now back down to 106. So kind of like you said, you know, one day weigh in Friday, Friday night. You know, okay, you, you get to weigh in, then all of a sudden you're you're rejuvenated, you're ready to go. Um, Louis Gill, I, I think he's probably as tall as like um, most 45 pounders, but he is he is still a, a 106 pounder. So he, he's another one coming in at the six seed now. Um, looking forward to seeing what he's able to do, especially with guys like Bo and Nathan Desmond there. And and I know he wasn't 100 percent healthy for last postseason, and uh, he wasn't as strong as he wanted to be last postseason. And he's still a state champion. You know, he he grinded through that unconventional postseason calendar, which is just as as you look back on it just a, an unbelievable ride to go through the super regional round and, and have to keep bringing your a game just in order to to make it to the next round you know you've seen some crazy things happen and so louis gill kind of fought and survived and then he, he he saved his best wrestling for last and you mentioned it you can't forget about him i think when it comes to size and strength and the experience that he has um i wouldn't call him a, a bracket buster by any means but you can't you can't overlook uh what this kid can do and i guess if he's going to be the sixth and uh, Bo's going to be the, the one, and, and Desmond's going to be the two. What He'll, he'll end up on, uh, what, the top ha- – he'll end up in Bo's side of the bracket, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that that'll be and, – and this weight in general, I think, just looking at the, at the seating, is a, is a powerhouse weight no matter what comes and goes with, with Knox and with Derek Jordan uh, moving up. Uh, it's a powerhouse weight in general, but also from a Pennsylvania perspective. And you can run down through all the other kids from PA who have seeds, but um, there, there's a bunch of them. So this is going to be a highly representative weight class for the Keystone State. I mean, and it usually is. You know, we we normally see a lot of Pennsylvania wrestlers competing at 106 and the lower weights here. And, um, you know, just thinking back to, to all the guys that have competed at 106 in the Super 32, it goes back quite a ways. But you had mentioned it, man. There's so many guys here, um, nine guys seated in the top 32, Bo being one, Desmond two, um, Mutarelli. And Anthony Mutarelli is a guy who we got to see at True Power this year. Um, he, he wrestled um, he, he wrestled Shane McFillin uh, of Becca. So I think he's going to be one that's that's in the mix as, as well. Um you know, you look at guys like, you know, from your backyard, Aaron Seidel from from Northern Lebanon. Um, I think he he's a guy who has potential to be a guy like Louis Gill, who was last year, where he was, um, you know, not necessarily undersized, but kind of, you know, took some lumps. He he, you know, took some losses at Powerade, but a was able to come through when it counted in the the postseason. Um, and, you know, I think he's one to, to keep an eye on here at the Super 32. Same with Luke Suriani from Abington Heights. He was a state medalist last year. He was sixth at 106. He had a, a great summer this year, um, you know, placed at the Journeyman Tournament, which is, which is obviously a, a very tough, uh, tough outing. He beat Seidel from Northern Lebanon there. So, you know, I'm looking forward to some of these young guys that haven't really had a chance to, to go against you know, head-to-head some of these these bigger-name guys. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where some of these young guys are able to, to fall. And, and by the way, I talked to Seidel yesterday just about Super 32. And, you know, I'm really, I'm really impressed by him as a kid and his, the way that he chases. He chases losses. Like, you, in wrestling, that's what the best kids do. They chase opportunities to lose. And, and do what they can to win. So Aaron Seidel has put himself to his credit in position to lose matches. The other thing I've also learned is that most of the kids uh, from the eastern half of the state, most of the seated Pennsylvania kids from the eastern part of the state have spent at least a little bit of time working out together this week. That was what Aaron Seidel said. So you have, you know, I, I, it was Seidel and I think Mutarelli and Davis Motika and Tahir uh, Parkins from Nazareth. All those guys were had gotten together, I think, at Wyoming Sam to, to work out and really try to bring it in full force. 
Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's a, a dangerous combination when you put all those guys in there um, together. I, I'm just going through the seeds um, that Willie updated, and it appears that Anthony Mutarelli is not in the seeds right now. So um, he was at one time. He was the 13. So it looks like uh, – Suriani is is 14. Um, Seidel is 15. And then Aaron Cement from Council Rock North, uh, he is the 18th. He's a guy who not a lot of people are going to know because he's 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 coming over from, from Jersey. Um, but he's now at Council Rock North. He's a guy who I know a lot of people have, have mentioned him to me as, hey, you, you better watch out for this this kid. He's, he's really tough. He's the 18th. Uh, Motika, as you mentioned, he's the 19th. Um, and then Tahir Perk, uh, Parkins is 27. McFillin is 28. So, you know, there are some changes from what we saw before uh, with with the uh, the seeds. Anthony Mutarelli not being in that. Of course, we, we mentioned how he had a win over McFillin at True Power. But there's a lot of unseated guys here that I'm looking forward to. Nico Fanella from Indiana area. He was a Keystone State junior high uh, champion this past year. Um, he was on our team at the National Freestyle Duels that we took out to, to Jersey. Um, and I, I got to talk to him and his dad, and, and I'm really impressed with the way he's wrestled um, throughout the year. And uh, Liam Flanagan from Central Dolphin, a guy who we saw last year, um, you know, make a, a solid run uh, through the postseason. And then Kai Sheptik from Waynesburg. I saw him at like 125, 130 at one point. And he's down to 106 for the Super 32. So, again, you mentioned it. You know, guys dropping down to, to wrestle these, you know, these smaller weights. If he can get back up and, and rejuvenate and rehydrate, I think he's going to be a problem for a lot of wrestlers. And just my two cents here, three Bethlehem Catholic kids uh, checking in at 106. They're going to have some things to sort out and maybe some good problems to solve for Jeff Karam with that young group of guys coming through led by those lightweights, including Nathan Desmond there. So interesting dynamic. Um, I'm pretty sure by the way um, that Aaron Seidel said that uh, there was one other kid working out at Wyoming then was Sebastian De Janeiro, uh, who's the 22 seat from Florida mm. just for, for what that's worth. So you, you had, you had a nice crew and obviously trying to, trying to get the best partners you can get in advance of this, of this beast is, uh, is huge. It really is. But, uh, you know, the story here is, is Bo Bassett, right? And, you know, what's going on with the seedings? What's going on with the, um, you know, w what is going on with all the, the jumping around? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the chips end up stacking and where they end up because um, it, it has pretty big implications. As I said, Bo went from the second to the first. Um, but if Knox comes down, it's like, okay, where do you put him? Um, he was a, a Fargo cadet national champion. Um I, I don't know. I think you can make an argument for, for any one of those two to be the top seed at 106 should that happen. Um, but we'll, we'll find out soon enough, Dustin. If you go to 113, this is where Vinny Kilkiri of Greater Latrobe, a guy who was a state champion as a freshman, of course he had that you know miracle run in the, in the state championships uh, to win a state title, beating Tyler Kasak, but also Jacob Van D in the state finals. Last year, he, he settles for third after losing to Zach Jackarusso. Um, Van D ended up winning that weight class, but he is here as the top seed, and there's, you know, for good reason. He won the Super 32 last year at 106 pounds, so now up to 113 for the Super 32 this year. Um, you know, Vinny had a, a, he had a loss to Dalton Perry at True Power. A couple weeks later, he goes down to Myrtle Beach, where the Super 32 was held last year, and wins a belt. Um, you know, obviously not the the year that he wanted, you know, to finish in the third position, but he's still the number one seed coming in here. Barrick Jordan coming up from 106 is the second seed. Anthony Knox from Jersey is the third. Uh, Cole Hunt from Georgia is the the fourth. I, man, Vinny's gonna have a uh, I, he's gonna have his hands full. I can just tell you that right now. Um, maybe not Pennsylvania wrestlers, but there's a lot of nationally ranked guys here that are gonna be looking to take him down. And and he he is the man to beat. You know, keeps that top seed with Barrick Jordan coming up. Uh, you you talk about you know the results not a roller coaster ride per se, but as you mentioned, the loss of True Power. Then he goes on a run at Super Thirty Two, uh, moves up to thirteen to try to get back at the top of the state podium. 
and runs into just a couple problems in in the uh, super regional round where he lost to Camden Williams. That was nine seven at Altoona. And you talk about two completely different body types, two different ends of the spectrum at the 113 weight class. Kilkiri on the on the short, um, powerful side. Camden Williams so long and such a good thrower, so good in these leverage situations. That ultimately is what won him the match against Vinny at Super Regionals. And then at states, he runs into Jack Russo from Delaware Valley, who had just a really good run at the state tournament was able to kind of slow him down and gum up his offense. And I suspect you're going to have some kids trying to do the same thing with him. Now, watching that and, and executing on that are two different things. To have that game plan, he's the kind of kid, even with that compact st- uh, stature of his, is able to dictate the tone of matches. And such a good combination of power and quickness and technique. And that's going to be a tough combination for anybody. You look at maybe some of these mismatch situations. If you have a, a couple longer 13 pounders, it's going to be it's going to be a real test for him to try to go through this bracket at, at 113. But I think what he learned last year was how to how to deal with different with guys who have different body types and different styles than him. Yeah, I mean, you you had mentioned. I mean, he has such a high pace, right? And he he you you go back and watch that match with uh, Jack Russo. You know, Jack Russo scored the only takedown of the match, and everyone was saying, "Well, you should you should hit him for stalling." And um, he was just—I mean, Vinny was just pushing him around the mat, right? Um, so you're right, and I think that's a, a style matchup. And you look at the match from Super Regionals with with Cannon Williams. I mean, he he was just—I don't I don't think he was prepared for that type of style match, right? Um, and the the thing about Vinny is he he corrects those things right I mean every week he's gotten better and better so I I would not be surprised to to see him you know continue to to improve and and do that here at the Super Thirty Two but he's not the only one from Pennsylvania um, he just happens to be the top seed Jacks Forrest from Bishop of Court now again not a lot of people are going to know the name because he's not from Pennsylvania originally um, he was from Chapel Hill North Carolina has moved up to uh, Johnstown to wrestle for Bishop McCourt. Um, him and Vinny Kilkerry have gone back and forth. Um, I don't think he's ever beaten Kilkerry, but Kilkerry's beat him uh, in Fargo, uh, and he also beat him at the Northeast Regionals in freestyle. Jax Force is, is kind of a guy that a lot of people are looking to um, to do big things on the high school level. And then Gage Botero from Freight Kirshen Academy, a guy we got to see at True Power. He wrestled Jack Consiglio. Um, he comes in as the 10th seed out of Faith Christian. So, you know, right off the bat, we've got a lot of, of talent. Um, Botero was a, a Fargo All-American this past year. Um, and then, of course, you have Sam Herring as well, who's the 15th seed. Uh, he is, you know, again, like Bo Bassett, only an eighth grader, but has already accomplished a lot. He's, you know, was a second place uh, finisher at the Fargo Nationals in, in the U16 uh, division. He won at True Power, beating Kale Nazio from Williamsport. So, you know, the kid's got – he's got talent, right? He's got talent. And, uh, you know, you got two Bishop McCourt guys both seated in the top 15 here. You know, you had mentioned Bethlehem Catholic with all those 106s. Here you got a couple of Bishop McCourt guys all kind of lumped together. And you've also got four – by my count, state medalists who are not seated in this tournament, who are capable of doing some some funky things, like Tyler Chapel. You're going to have to beat Tyler Chapel. Uh, you're you're going to have to beat. You know, Gage Botero uh, didn't quite get over the top. I would have loved to have seen him and Consiglio maybe wrestle another minute because Botero was right there with him and you know was able to kind of funk out of. He, he wanted to, to to get funky where Consiglio that wasn't his style, and I think. One precision shot from Consiglio early was e- enough in that matchup, but that formula, you know, he, he's going to make it really difficult even for these high-level guys to finish on him. And Kale Nazio, I mean, w- what can you say about about this kid? Just kind of keeps his nose to the grindstone, and here he comes in as the very last seed. He's got a number next to his name, but he got that that 32 seed. I'm interested to see if maybe he can spring an upset or two along the way too. Oh, I and I definitely think he could. Um, you know, there, you you look at how deep one thirteen is for for Pennsylvania. I mean, we haven't even mentioned you know Carson Wagner from Northampton area. Um, you know, Kale Nazio, as you mentioned. You know, he had that that close loss to to Sam Herring, but let's not forget. I mean, he was in the state finals last year. Um, I, I think he's a guy who's who's going to come out. 
um, looking to score points and, and, you know, get on the podium uh, here in Greensboro. But also you look at all the unseated wrestlers that I think are really going to push um, some of these, these bigger name guys. You had mentioned him, Tyler Chappell. Um, you know, Chappell has a win over Carson Wagner. Uh, you know, not saying I'm surprised that he's not in the seats, but I, I am a little bit to, to say, you know, Tyler Chappell shouldn't be in the top, you know, 32. I, I would say, um, you know, you're, you're missing out on him being there because I, I think he probably deserves it uh, just based on his, his records um, throughout Scholastic and, and Freestyle. You look at other guys, Landon Bainey from West Branch, state medalist. Uh, he was uh, six last year. Um, in addition to to wrestling on uh, the uh, in in the state tournament, he then went on to wrestle in freestyle for us at the Wrangell Mania team, in Pennsylvania. Um, and I was really impressed with his pace and how he was able to do some in match adjustments. Hunter Robeson from Sagertown, another guy who's you know he's a senior now, um, and he's kind of bounced around. He was a a guy who was looking to be you know, a state champion this past year. Um, at 106, but just didn't pan out that way. He ends up uh, and settles for a uh, fourth place, or I'm sorry, fifth place finish um, in Hershey. So these are these are guys that are going to come battle. You know, these are these are guys that are not going to go easily away. And you know, uh, you look at all the young guys: Jax Forrest, Gage Matera, Sam Herring. You know, these guys are all guys that have never wrestled one high school match in their careers. And then you have guys like Hunter Robeson, who's wrestled in Powerade, wrestled in you know the state tournament. Carson Wagner's wrestled in every single tournament known to man, Tyler Chappell, you know. So if I'm one of those guys, I got a chip on my shoulder because who, who are you to see these young guys over me, like, you know, when I've already wrestled some of these, these bigger-name tournaments? And if you're a kid who has, a, who has worn a state medal around your neck, you are familiar with the idea of having to grind through these difficult tournament situations where maybe you're not at your best or it's a low scoring. It's a, it's a odd matchup for you. You're not feeling your, your best. You're sick. You're banged up, whatever. In order to, to get to that state medal, you have to have a certain set of qualities that will translate pretty well to an event like this too. Now, obviously high level wrestling from, from start to finish. So these, there will be challenges down there that some of these guys haven't seen, but, in my opinion, if you have a Pennsylvania State medal, you have what it takes to surprise some people down there, whether you're seated or not. Yeah, and and you know, you just look at the number of wrestlers that we haven't even talked about that are that are here. Um, you know, Stephen Harris from Conwell Egan, he's he was an eighth place finisher last year. Um, Logan Sallet, uh, Parker Senapal from Burgettstown. Uh, I'm excited to see Jason Torres from Malvern Prep. Uh, he's a, a young freshman who I, I think is going to do well in his high school career. So. Uh, you know, overall, I, I I would say you know Kilkerry is is in the hunt, right? Um, Jax Forrest is a is a podium. You know, he he's uh, kind of a, a fringe guy there, being the the seventh seed. Um, and Gage with Tara, Sam Herring are going to have to wrestle pretty tough to to get onto the podium. But you know, I'm I'm really watching Carson Wagner, Kale Nazio, and and Tyler Chapel, Hunter Robeson. Those are the guys. I mean. Not saying that I, I, it doesn't matter what happens with the other guys, but these are the ones that I want to see where you're at, right? Because we've seen Sam, we've seen Gage, you know, Journeyman, uh, Fargo, all these different uh, major events. I want to see how these other guys are, are performing um, and seeing where they're at. And, you know, especially getting older, right? You know, sometimes you just, ah, I'm going to take the summer off. I'm not going to wrestle. You know, when you're younger, it's it's a lot different, right? You, you're hungry. You want to you keep on going. And you know, Pennsylvania has a lot of young guys here at 113. Speaking of young guys, Dustin, if you go up to 120, and, and I said this in in our in, uh, my preview of 120, is it's not every day that you have um, a, a guy who has never wrestled a high school match seated over a guy that was a state champion in Pennsylvania, right? But that's that's what we have here at 120 pounds, where um, Maddox Shaw is the number 10 seed. So Maddox Shaw is a guy who was uh, PJW state champion. He was uh, a Keystone state champion. He was uh, a Fargo All-American this past year, which really is why he's he's in the national rankings because of the quality wins he's had. Him and Dalton Perry have gone back and forth, back and forth. Um, I think they wrestled three times in, in one year. And uh, But Jaden Pepe from Wyoming area is sitting at the number 20 seed. He only had one loss last year, and he was a state champion. Be the year before that, he was third in the state. And, and you know, 
he's rewarded with a a you know a number 20 seat so it's like my gosh you know what's what's going on there and uh you know i don't know I, i'm excited to see dalton perry and i'm excited to see um maddox shaw and and where they are with uh regards to some of these bigger guys nate jessaruga is is the top seed he's one of the best in the nation so but where does that leave Jaden Pepe? You know, I, I want to see where he's he's going to end up. And, and maybe, I, I don't know um, if he's a kid who's fueled by disrespect or is concerned about seedings, but to, you know, to be a state champion in Pennsylvania and, and to be a number 20 seed, at the very least, is kind of a sobering reminder for all of us of just how deep and how good this tournament is. You know, as you mentioned, they're all they're all taking aim at at a pretty prohibitive favorite in this one, and Nate Jessaruga, who I think is fourth in Willie's pound for pound rankings. But th- this is a good group of PA kids, and, and I know you mentioned it in in the preview that you did for for PA Power. But Gavin Bradley, unseated down there, tough, physical, high pace. I mean, this is a, I don't think anybody in this bracket is all that interested in seeing a, an experienced uh, kid like this. Um, early on. Hayden Cunningham, I think there'd probably be a number next to his name if he were healthy last year from from State College. Uh, Cohen Bainey from Bald Eagle area uh, as a fourth place medalist. You know, there, there's uh, Mason Ziegler, you know, yeah. a seventh placer last year as, as a freshman, I believe. You know, he was, um, he looked pretty good against uh, against um, Carl Schindeldecker at True Power a, a few weeks ago. Yeah, he he definitely did, and I was and he was a, a late you know kind of uh, fill in there. So um, for him to take that match late and still end up you know being in that match and wrestling Carl pretty tough. Um, and this is why I love doing shows live because I get text messages and and DMs during the show, and I can see what what's going on. Um, Jaden Pepe is not listed in Willie's updated seeds, so um, I don't see him in there. And I'm also hearing potential rumors that. Maddox Shaw may not be at the Super 32. So um, those are things just to keep an eye on. And again, when we when we do that, and I, I, and I think I told you this yesterday when we, we talked about doing the show is I can't tell you how many years I've done a preview um, and done a, a show and I'm like, this is it. We got all the guys here. And next thing you know, half of them aren't there or, or the big, you know, some of the big name guys are just, they're, they're not there um, for whatever reason it's it's hard to do a preview it's not like the state tournament where unless you're missing weight you're, you're showing up right um so i i get it but that those that's not confirmed at this point but Jaden is not in the seeds that willie updated uh mason leapart i don't know did you mention him dustin at all i mean this is a guy who was i mean very very close to beating mac church last year in the state tournament i mean there's a lot of people from District 3 that are saying he should have beat Mac Church. You know, they missed some back points. And, um, you know, Mason finished third in the state last year um, in his third trip to the state tournament. He's he's committed to FNM. He's the number 19 seed. I I love me some Mason Leapart, man. I, I've, I've watched him wrestle for a long time. Um, I've been on the receiving end of, of some, you know, harsh, harsh criticism for overlooking him over the years. And, um I'm not going to do that anymore. I, he's, he's a guy that I think is, is going to compete with some of these bigger name guys. And, and same with Troy Homan from Penn Trafford, a guy who's really jumped the levels in his career um, over the years, training with Vinny Kilkeria, but having to wrestle him a whole bunch. In fact, they wrestled in the third and fourth place match in Hershey last year. He's committed to NC State. So, you know, you got two Division One recruits there in the, in the top, you know, 30 seeds here uh, at the Super 32. And I've seen Lee Part enough <clears throat> to know that he he's on a pretty short list of uh, of guys who can turn your offense into his scoring. You know his, his ability to to get you to depths that you don't want to go as a wrestler. What looks like a good opportunity on Mason Lee Part isn't usually a good opportunity at all. You know, uh, two years ago, and and it was good to see him get on the state podium last year. I thought he he was better than his finish the year before. He went I th- I think he went two and out. Um, as a sophomore the year before and was clearly much better than what he showed there. Maybe after he lost early, it was, it was just tough for him to come back, but that was the year where he beat Aiden Lewis at the yeah, district right. tournament. And that was, I believe a quarterfinal matchup. So he, he beat uh, Aiden Lewis largely on what I said. He funked his way to, I think a four point move where he turned one of Aiden Lewis's a pretty quality shot into, into a four point move for himself and won that way. Lewis came back and he, the, you know, the next week, 
or two weeks later was was uh, in the state finals. So Lee Part, it, I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the fact that he's only got one state medal to his credit. He's a guy, just like I said with uh, with Gavin Bradley. I don't think anybody really wants to run into that style either. <laughs> and he 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 has a way of kind of uh, making that style shine, almost no matter who he wrestles. Now, you know there there's a bunch of outstanding kids there, and you know guys who are prepared to be able to finish shots under those circumstances, but. He's uh he's way too funky to really uh be looking forward to wrestling him down there. I I remember that match from Spring Grove High School very very well. Uh and, and you're right, it was the quarterfinals and um you know Lewis like you said comes back and, and is a state runner up and and Mason just like kind of fizzled out there at the at the state tournament. So you're thinking, man, like this is a guy who beat the state runner up. Um that was a, a wacky year at that weight, I thought. Um but in saying that Mason is a guy who who's, he's a veteran, right? He's, he's been in the trenches. He's had, he's had a lot of uh, big matches. And like I said, he was very close to, to beating Mac church last year um, in, in the state tournament. So I would not be surprised to see him knock off some of these, these other, you know, names that are, are up there in the seats. Um, and, and there's, there's quite a bit of other Pennsylvania wrestlers that we haven't even mentioned. Like you said, Gavin Bradley, probably one of the most impressive performances at true power. And I know the guy, he was supposed to wrestle Dalton Perry. Um, you know, Verrett is a, is a, a younger wrestler, but Bradley just came out firing on all cylinders, man. I mean, he was just, he, he was hammering it. Um, and hit, I'm pretty sure he could wrestle a 20 minute match and not get winded. So th that's going to pay dividends down here at super 32 when you're wrestling four five, six matches, you know, pretty, you know, close to back to back. So, I'm excited to see Gavin because I think he's probably going to wrestle well. You had mentioned him, Aiden Cun uh, Hayden Cunningham. If he had not been injured last year, this may be a different conversation, but he, he was banged up last year for State College, unable to, to wrestle. Um, you know, I, I think he is, is in the mix. I, I don't know if he's quite back to full strength yet. Uh, Mason Ziegler, another one, like you said, wrestled tough at, at True Power. Could he, you know, win a few matches? And here's the thing. The Super 32 and, and Pennsylvania, you know, you ever hear that saying is you, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. You know, your, your grandmother say that to you and you're, you're trying, you put so much on your plate and you're like, I can't finish this. Pennsylvania wrestlers do that a lot with Super 32. They come down there and like, man, I'm, I'm you know, ranked number two in the, the state or I'm a state medalist. I'm, I'm going to go down there and a lot of them go one and two. A lot of them go two and two because there's just these brackets are insanely deep. Um, and that's not a knock on, on us as, as, you know, Pennsylvania wrestlers, but it's just, you know, I, I know there's an aura around us, but when you go to super 32, this ain't a joke, you know, <laughs> like you're going to get a guy who is, who is really, really tough in the round of 264. Um, it, it just look at the, the list to get into it. You're, you're not wrestling. There's no real easy matches at the Super 32, and, and that's why it's so impressive for those who end up do placing here. Yeah, and I think um, Vinny Kokiri said it, I'm pretty sure. Just the, the emphasis in any tournament on trying to stay in the moment that you're in and not allow yourself to get swept up by what the brackets look like, how many matches you have to win to get to X, Y, or Z. Uh, at any tournament, that's kind of, uh, fruitless behavior. Let's put it put it that way. It's not going to get you anywhere good if you're not paying attention to the, the the moment that you're in. And it's especially true at Super 32, where if you allow yourself to look at the big picture and look how daunting it is, and and try to assess probabilities of you making it through that, you're you're already on your heels a bit, I think, for the actual wrestling. So it just kind of comes down to all the tournament cliches about surviving and advancing and trying to stay on a, on a even keel mentally and emotionally, you know, if you're going to suffer that loss, then it's really important if you lose early to not let yourself get too far ahead and think too much about how many matches you have to win. It's not going to work at a tournament like this. You really have to stay engaged and try to, and for that, I mean, it's a really, it's a really awesome test at this time of year to, to see where you're at when it comes to your mental fortitude. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, just looking at the field, you're, you're right. You have to be, you have to be prepared for this. This isn't just one of those warm up tournaments where you're, you're going to, to see how your, your condition is and how you're, you've been wrestling. I mean, like you said, this is something that um, it, it tests your fortitude. I, I like that. I may steal that. 
126, it thins out a little bit. We're, we're kind of, um, you know, a little bit privileged that 106 through 120. 26, it, it drops off a little bit for us. Uh, but Nick O'Neill is, is a guy who had a great journeyman tournament. He, he won the journeyman hammer um, last year. He had a great year despite finishing fourth in national preps. He only had a, a handful of losses, one of them to be Mason Gibson. He finished third at the Powerade tournament. A sophomore, really a huge name coming up through the ranks. Uh, and his younger brother, Matt, is, is really a, another big name coming up through the Malvern program. Nick O'Neill sits at the number 14 spot. Um, the one who I'm really excited to see is Colin Rath. And, and I am biased because Colin was at True Power in 2020 as a cameraman. And he came back and wrestled in 2021 against Spencer Barnhart, a guy he had lost to um, a week or two weeks prior to that at the journeyman. Avenges that loss. So, um, you know, Colin's a, a freshman now. Here's the thing about Colin is – he wrestled in the Super 32 last year as an eighth grader and placed eighth at 113. That, that's really hard to do, right? I mean, Mason Gibson won it as an eighth grader. Ryan Kirkham won it as an eighth grader. Those are two guys that are, are you know, two of the best in their class. Colin Rath placed as an eighth grader at, at 113 in a very deep weight class. I'm excited to see where he's at this year. Um, we saw him at True Power beating Spencer Barnhart. Now he's the, the number 22 seed. Um, and, uh, you know, just really excited to see where he's at Chris Vargo, who is, uh, the 28th seed here. He, he goes to Charleroi wrestles for Bentworth in a co-op Vargo had one of the weirdest roller coasters of a postseason last year. Um, really, really up and down, but it ended on the right note because he finished third in the state, um, and finished ahead of all the wrestlers he lost to in the super region. So, you know, last year was a weird year with the super region, but it was especially weird for Chris Vargo who was winning and then losing, but ended up winning when it, it mattered to, and got the third place finish behind Jaden Pepe and Gavin Bradley. So two, two very quality wrestlers he finished third behind. So I, I think a lot of people are probably going to, to, you know, to quote myself as sleep on, you know, I, that's one of my favorite terms is, you know, kids being slept on. I, I think a lot of people are going to overlook him. Um, but uh, that would be a mistake. I don't think when you're, I don't think you have to say that you're quoting yourself. I don't think anybody's going to get on you about the attribution of your quote if you're I, quoting yourself. You Just, might, they might. I, I, you know, I've got a lot of haters out there, Dustin. A lot. I know. Of I know. You have a lot of friends. You got even more enemies. I'm familiar. Uh, to your point, Colin Rath. Um, I wasn't familiar with his history with with Barnhart before True Power, but. When I'm watching those two wrestle, I got the feeling that Raph would win six, maybe seven out of the ten times. And I could be wrong about that. But from start to finish in that one, he wrestled like a kid who was a senior and not not a, a, a two months into his freshman year. Um, that eighth place finish at, at Super 32 last year, I mean, that that is confirmation that he has the goods to, to survive and, and keep punching his way through this thing. Uh, that – you know, it's strange seeing a, a kid who hasn't wrestled a varsity match yet for Bethlehem Catholic be ranked ahead of Dante Frenzy, for example. And I believe, right. don't, yeah. don't quote me on this, but I think there's 14 Frenzies in this tournament uh, <laughs> all, at various weight classes. And there's another 14 coming up through in the sixth and seventh grade. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, Colin Roth, I'm really excited to see where he's at because, you know, he looks like a, a, a kid who's pretty unflappable. You know, he looks like he's got a lot of poise in addition to his technique and his strength and all that. I, one, I like the fact that you pointed out that frenzies, there's, there's, you know, like a whole bunch of them, but also the Becca, you know, contingent that's down here. They make up like half of the, between Bishop McCord and, and uh, Bethlehem Catholic, there's like, that's like half the Pennsylvania field, right? Um, yeah. It's, it is weird to see a guy like frenzy not seated in the, in the top 33. Um, but you know, you got to look at, at, you know, what what Colin Rath has done at the Super 32 previously and, you know, his experience at, at Journeyman and, and things like that. So, um, but let's not forget, you know, Frenzy beat Carter Dybert, right, uh, when, he, when he finished fifth in the state. He was fourth last year. Um, Carter Dybert was third at the Super 32 last year. Um, you know, Frenzy is a guy who it was uh, – he's, he's very tall – very lanky. So I don't know if he's filled out anymore being at 26, but um, he, he and his brother both are here. Marco's here as well. Um, and as you mentioned, there's, there's quite a few of them. 
I am very excited about 26 for a variety of reasons. One is we only got three in the top, you know, 33 seeds, but look at all the other wrestlers that I think can make a, a run here. Ashton Campbell from Becca. I like him a lot. He was at Palisades his freshman year, now a junior. Uh, Vince Mozakis. Do you have to say any more other than your Vince Mozakis, younger brother of Nick? Um, he's really good. Kind of surprised that he's not in the in the seedings as well. Um, and you look at, at guys further down, but Nick Jones from West Allegheny, very impressed with him last year as a freshman. Big name coming up through, uh, wrestled with the Gladiators. Very impressed with, with his uh, performances I- until he got injured uh, last year. He was banged up a little bit. Gunnar Myers from Wallen Paul Pack. He is he was a guy who really jumped out and, and finished fifth in the state as a freshman, coming out of uh, a school that really doesn't get a whole lot of recognition uh, and is not known for wrestling. He uh, I thought he had a great super regional and then a state tournament that you know he he finished very high at on uh, in Hershey considering where he came from. Xander Fatoris from uh, Waynesburg. He's also in the the weight class as is Joe Simone from Waynesburg. A guy who I was pretty high on last year. He was a Powerade runner-up, lost to Vinny Kilkiri. Um, you know, and then Blake Reiner from Trinity, another young guy. Charlie Robeson or Robeson from Conwell Egan. Uh, I think he's he's a, a guy to keep an eye on. So uh, again, we have the the quote big names. I wouldn't even call Nick O'Neill uh, a big name, but these are the guys that are seated. So where where is Pennsylvania going to end up when when it you know? And a lot of these guys are going to meet head to head too, which is it's just really great for someone like myself who does rankings. It's it's nice to have those head to head results in, in an environment like this. And you know, from a Pennsylvania perspective, this weight class looks very very ripe for an unseated PA kid to to get onto that podium somehow because there are some guys they're they're just a prove it situation away from from being better recognized, like Xander Fatoros, for example. Um, you know, a, a few of these guys, they, they have proven opportunities and can really kind of change the, the whole narrative about where they are, you know, some of these, some of these young wrestlers and stuff, but I'm definitely more intrigued. No, no disrespect to the, the kids who are seated from Pennsylvania in this class, but I'm very intrigued by the guys who aren't seated from PA in this class. There's a bunch of really, really good ones uh, that have a shot to, to do something special here. Yeah, I, I I mean Super Thirty Two is where you make your money, right? That's that's where people end up, you know, getting offers. They're they're the ones that, um, you know, get the looks from the college wrestlers. So, so somebody's gonna somebody's gonna do it, right? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see somebody who who's turning it up and ends up, uh, you know, getting getting noticed where they normally wouldn't be. So, I mean, that's the reason why people go to Super Thirty Two. Um, it, it's one of the the tournaments of the year where there's just so many college coaches. Um, especially before the season. So it's it's obviously a, a big draw for them. If we go up to 132, we have Nick Bazakis from Wyoming Seminary. Yes, I know he's from Florida originally, but he was wrestled at, at uh, seven for the last few years now. He he's wrestles for Team Pennsylvania. Uh, he wrestled there for Fargo. He is a two-time Super 32 belt winner already, going for his third. Um, and then you got Mac Church from Waynesburg, who was a state champion last year. Um, last year was a super 32 medals finishing fifth or I'm sorry, fourth at 120. Um, you know, again, you look at the trajectory that he had as a freshman beats Kilkerry in the regional finals that ends up, uh, in, in third place, uh, in Hershey Kilkerry first Van D second. So I, I'm, I'm very, the thing I'm excited about is one, he got his commitment out of the way. So he, he's no longer worried about, you know, impressing the college coaches. That's one. Two is he's up, a, for me, a significant weight. You know, I mean, I know it's only 32, but, you know, he went from 106 to 120 to 132. I'm curious to see where his body is and what he is going to be able to do wrestling stronger, bigger, older opponents. I think along those lines, I mean, what he did last year at 120 pounds was a bigger question mark to me making the jump from 106 than jumping to 132 from 120. You know, I, I thought he, he looked really good at, at 120 pounds, and I suspect he's going to look pretty good and pretty strong at 132 as well. Um, challenging situation just with, uh, with Buzakis there, and the, the list of names who have won multiple Super 32s is an extremely short list. 
And, you know, Vinny Kilkiri is trying to get his name on that list. I don't know how many have done it twice. I don't know how many have done it three times, but that is, that is not a very common thing either as I look through the results before. And to your point earlier when you were kind of wrapping up 126, I mean, this tournament, you know, there are some exceptions, and it's not an end-all, be-all. If you get on the podium, it's not a guarantee you're going to be a good college wrestler. If you don't get on the podium, it doesn't mean you're not going to get your shot at the next level. But it is a pretty good indicator of whether you can or can't really thrive at the next level. If you look down the list of names of guys who have won this thing, you know, doing that and winning this tournament or finishing high on the podium it really speaks well to your ability to, to wrestle top, top competition and to, to do it in just a, you know, a chaos filled atmosphere, having to wrestle a bunch of matches to do it. Right. With like 25 mats, you know, it's, it's, it's really insane. It, try covering it, Dustin. It's, it's not, it's not fun from a media perspective either. Um, you're, you're absolutely right though. It's not a, it's not a automatic, you're going to be good in college, but it's also not, Hey, you didn't place. That doesn't mean you're not going to have a good career. Right. Um, some other names here at, at uh, 132, and I just looked at Willie's updated seeds. Mac Church is now the 12. Uh, Buzakis is still the one. Um, Spencer Barnhart will be the next one to check in. He's at 18, so they bumped up two. Um, and then Colton Stone King is the 24. So Stone King is in the same bracket as his teammate, Mac Church. Uh, Stone King, he was also on our national freestyle uh, duels team. I, I, you know, I thought he wrestled really well out there in Jersey. Stone King was fifth in the state last year. Uh, it was his first state medal. Spencer Barnhart, uh, national prep champion, um, you know, really has, has come on pretty strong, and he's now at 32. We talked about him and Colin Rath. Um, you know, other than that, it's it's a it's thinned out from Pennsylvania standpoint. Um, Ethan Cole from Benton area, he was seventh in the state last year. He's now up to 132. Uh, a guy I'm looking forward to seeing is Owen Reinsel from Brookville. He, uh, you know, he's had last year he battled Mason Gibson like three times, maybe four, um, and he's committed to Lehigh. So he's going to be joining his his former teammate Nathan Taylor of Brookville at Lehigh, two time state medalist, two time finishing fourth in the state. Uh, he's unseated. So looking forward to seeing how he ends up uh, here at the Super 32. Yeah, and let's let's see what that means. You know, let's see how much that matters, that that experience. I mean, certainly if you're going to go head-to-head with Mason Gibson a bunch of times, uh, you're going to have some kind of feel for what it's like to have to beat a kid like that in, in, in the Super 32. So more power to him. I want to see what happens there with Ethan Kolb. You know, I think he, he was in a situation, I think, with, with a, another cluster of guys who, you know, the difference between finishing seventh at that weight class last year and finishing second or third wasn't all that much. So I don't put a lot of stock in that seventh place. I think it could have just as easily been higher. Let's go up to 138 pounds. Speaking of jumping up weights, Tyler Kasak from Becca. He was a state champion last year, beating Carter Diver in the state finals. Fifth in that wild 106-pound bracket, which, by the way, you look at all the state champions in 2021 that were in the state bracket or in at 106, um, you know, Vinny Kilkiri, Jacob Van D. Uh, Briar Priest didn't make it to the state tournament. Mac Church and Tyler Kasak, all of them state champions, and all were in that one bracket or in that one weight class um, in 2020. He is the number three seed is Kasak, uh, a guy who I'm very familiar with, and that's Matt Repos. He checks in at the number 14 seed. Uh, didn't have a great Hershey tournament last year. I was disappointed with how he finished up. I thought he took some losses he shouldn't have. He was fourth in the state as a freshman beat Mac Church on that caution call, comes back uh, and finishes in fourth. But last year he was seventh. I-, I thought he would finish higher, but he had a good journeyman tournament, um, you know, knocked off a few nationally ranked guys. So that's why he is is in there in the top 15 um, in the seedings. And, and going down through Dom Fendora from Downingtown West, very impressed with him at True Power. Probably one or two, maybe three of the most impressive performances at True Power for me Dom Fendora beating Scott Johnson. Fendora looks just really, really sharp. Really, he looked like he was in season. You know, that's that's the type of wrestling you saw out of him. He is the number 24 seed. He's committed to Drexel, so you, you know he's pretty solid. Luke Simcox from uh, Central Mountain. He and Dalton Perry have, have kind of come up through together. They both have uh, very good results in, in the junior high ranks. Simcox last year was a state medalist, finished his fifth in the state last year. He wrestled Briar Priest 
at True Power. And, you know, he was coming up in weight a little bit, and he battled him tough. I mean, he, he almost took out the state champ, and, uh, you know, I, I was really impressed with how he wrestled and uh, excited to see him. We had him on our, our Wrangle Mania team up in New York at the Journeyman uh, event. So, you know, I got to know him a little bit, and, you know, he, he's going to bring it. Uh, I mean, just the Luke Simcox, the first time I saw him was at Super Regionals, which was a wild 126-pound bracket last year. Yeah. Uh, he beat Ethan Bergink, the state champ from Hempfield area, uh, early in that tournament and kind of announced his presence, I thought, and uh, was really big for 126. Um, and sim- you know, on the other side of that, Matt Repos was, uh, you know, he looked a little on the small side for 126. So I'm really eager to see Matt Repos making that jump from 26 to 38. Um, your your former coach Jeff Swagger, those guys really, you know, last year in particular with all the weirdness, really subscribed to the idea of let's make sure our wrestlers are comfortable and are capable of going six minutes. And so when push came to shove, there were a few CD wrestlers last year, including Matt Repos who if they were on the fence between, let's say, 120 and 126 in his case, they went 126 to try to feel better and have more energy and have more endurance. And I thought there were a couple times in the postseason where where that that hurt repost a, a bit. Guys' size and strength, you know, Simcox included, who beat him, you know, at, at Super Regionals. And then I think, you know, the, the situation with the state tournament, those being eight-man brackets and the fact that once you walked into Giant Center, you knew you were walking out with a medal – I think that dynamic worked against Matt Repost a bit last year. You've seen him. I mean, he was right there with Tyler Kasak early yeah, he was. in her state. He, he beat Mac Church on that caution call uh, a couple years ago at 106, but th- those two guys were very evenly matched. They wrestled last year at the, at the PIAA team championships, and that was another really tight match that Mac Church won late. Um, deserving winner, without a doubt. But Matt Repost is right there with Kasak. He's right there with, with Mac Church. Uh, I can imagine without having caught up with Matt or, or the CD coaching staff since really uh, the end of last season, that if he's 138 pounds, I suspect that he took the lessons from last year, applied them, and you'll see him filling out that weight class a little bit better than he did last year. Well, I mean, I, I would expect that as well because his results at the journeyman would indicate that. Um, 38 is an interesting weight here at, at the Super 32 for Pennsylvania because Look at all the unseated guys that are just really tough. Connor Pierce is one guy that jumps off the page at me. Um, you know, we saw him at, at True Power. He lost to Connor Hare. Uh, he's a three-time state medalist. You know, seventh twice, fourth last year. Chad Ozias from Connellsville. He was eighth in the state last year. Connor Saylor from Hickory. You know, the the Gills aren't the only boys from Hickory that can wrestle. Connor Saylor is a guy who who is really really tough. Um, but then guys that that you know, haven't been on the podium quite yet, but are, are very capable of it. Braden Bauer from Williamsport, him and his twin brother, Riley, I've been really high on since they came into high school at Williamsport. Uh, Lucas Capusta from Hempfield had a great year last year after, I wouldn't say a disappointing freshman year, but he took his lumps, right? And, and this year, this past year, he, he really, uh, I think, took it up a, a level. Um, Nathan Stone from Franklin Regional, kind of a, a middle of the road guy that just keeps on banging his head, banging his head, and 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 trying to get better and getting better. And I think that's paid off for him. Ty Waters from West Allegheny, very interested to see Ty. Uh, I've been pretty high on on him uh, coming up through the ranks. He was injured last year, had some quality wins, including some some wins at the Powerade tournament um, before suffering a season en- ending injury. So uh, another guy that I'm really looking forward to. And then there's a couple freshman that I'd like to see uh, Luke Sipes from Altoona guy who I'm, I'm pretty familiar with who's has come through the, the ranks he's a, a name that you know Luke Simcox and Luke Sipes you, you kind of always saw those two Lukes coming up through the PJW uh, ranks and Colin Gage from from Quakertown another very very tough freshman coming up through so uh, you know Quakertowns they've always had tough wrestlers but um you know i I think colin's gonna be uh really good for them so 38 you know there's more guys to talk about i think in the unseated area than there are the seated wrestlers because there's just so many possibilities and so many tough guys here that just aren't in the the top 33 and and again i mean i could probably say the same thing in each weight class but it's hard for me to wrap my head around a three-time pennsylvania state medalist being a pretty hefty underdog 
And that's what the, that's what the Super 32 brings to the table, man. I mean, it, there there are some absolute hammers all over the place, and but it's a good opportunity for a guy like Connor Pierce to to prove it, to get out there and, and get it done, and and uh, prove that he was underrated. 145 this guy's not going to be overlooked and that is Jackson Arrington from Forest Hills and my gosh you know he he was he was third in in the state as a sophomore after winning a state title he was first in the state last year winning uh, a dominating performance uh you know at, at 132 pounds won the Powerade tournament um goes out to Fargo um you know finishes fourth and and had some some really good wins there uh, but he was fifth at the Super 32 last year at 126. He goes to, to Flo's, who's number one, gets a win over Hunter Garvin, and, I mean, he, he's one of the top guys in the nation now, right? I mean, that that's he goes from finishing third behind Ryan Crookham and Levi Haynes, and now Jackson Arrington and Levi Haynes are both, you know, arguably the, the top guys in their, in their weight classes. Um, you know, he's going to have a very tough time with the field. I'm not saying he's going to walk through this. Cody Chittum uh, from Tennessee. He used to be at Blair. He, he's from the Tennessee area. He's one of the best in the nation. Um, he's going to have his hands full if, if those two do meet. Um, you know, I, I think you look at the other Pennsylvania wrestlers here, Jude Swisher, uh, another one that I'm really looking forward to seeing him and uh, his M2 teammate, Pearson Manville uh, from State College. They're both uh, seated in the top 10. Swisher's a six. Uh, Manville is the seven uh, and, and a guy who I'm very very impressed with and that's Dylan Evans from Chartier's uh, Valley a guy who was eighth as a freshman last year he he has a very good run um, through the postseason ends up finishing fourth in the state but what impressed me was him going out to Fargo and finishing third in both freestyle and Greco that is a lot of matches I think he won like 20 total matches in Fargo between the two styles um it was just amazing. And, and, you know, he has a lot of college visits for a reason. A lot of guys want him on their team. Uh, he comes in at the number nine seed. So, you know, 145, and we haven't even scratched the surface with all the other names here. Um, but right off the bat, Jackson Arrington, number two seed, Swisher as a sixth, uh, and, and Pearson Manville as a seventh. I think that's, that's, good. that's a good uh, barometer for Pennsylvania. Boy, I think when you, when you're describing Jackson Arrington finishing third uh, at the state tournament behind, behind Levi and Crook, I mean that's there. There's a scenario out there. I mean it's improbable where you have two or three potential NCAA champs out, out of that one bracket at state. True. I mean think of the, so right now. I mean uh, at Super 32, this feels a little bit like Arrington getting out of that third place finish and being, you know, sort of in a prove it position uh, and trying to get over the top now, this time at Super 32, where it was states before. Uh, definitely has the goods to do it. Good win for him at who's number one to, to kind of get himself, you know, in the right direction for this one. But there's a lot of depth in this weight class. There are, what, four Pennsylvania kids in the top eight or nine seeds. I mean, these these are this is something that could very well, you know, we'll, we'll see a, a, some of these matchups probably in the postseason as well. Pearson Manville was was one of the victims of you know last year's weirdness. You yeah, know, having having lost in uh, was it the regional round and and yep. at the true the true second match got yep. him. Yep. You know, and that that was a challenging situ- situation for everybody to you know to lose in the final at a place like that and still have to come back and wrestle again. It's just unconventional and um, just didn't work out for him and didn't even make it to super regionals or states. And now you see him as the sixth seed uh, in, in this tournament. And uh, talented kid, did a, ha- had an unbelievable run out, out at Fargo. So I, I, I like him. It, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, the Manvilles, uh, I think all of them, right, folk style isn't at the top of any of their lists. And I think Pearson's in the same boat. You know, what's he going to do in a tough uh, folk style tournament like this? Uh, and then, you know, just like the other weights, you know, Eric Aldorfer was was a really nice yeah. surprise last year from Faith Christian uh, in the state tournament. From my backyard, Griffin Gonzalez isn't, isn't a big name. And I think he's still got some scratching and clawing to do to get there, but they love him uh, at, at Lebanon, and, and they think he's got at least state medalist potential. I think that's probably happening for him this year. So a lot of really good kids um, coming from Pennsylvania. Cade Wordsberger from Meadowbrook Christian as well, as if he's still listed at, at – uh, um, in the in the um, I guess he's not in the seeds, but if, if he's if he's still participating, 
So good weight class for Pennsylvania, good weight class overall. And I'm really curious to see, can Jackson Arrington get over the top here? It, it, it's it's going to be a, that's a tall task, right? But uh, I, I think he definitely, he's, Proven that he's in the conversation. There's no doubt about that. Um, you had mentioned a lot of names that I'm, I'm pretty high on. Uh, Gonzalez, Wernsberger. Um, Kellen Laffey from Pine Richland is a guy who who I think is is really um, under the radar, and I don't think he's quite getting the looks that he probably should because um, he hasn't had a, a state medal to his name. Uh, Connor Hare from Montgomery. A little surprised that he's not in, in the, the top 33 here, but – Again, look at how deep it is. You know, he had a win over Alderfer at the redemption duel that we did after states. Um, we saw him wrestle Connor Pierce at True Power a few weeks ago. Uh, he got a win there. Connor's just he's down to wrestle anybody, anytime, anywhere, any weight. You know, it doesn't matter. He, he and I love that about him because he's just a competitor. I could say, Connor, I need you to wrestle a bear next and then a, a crocodile after that. Anyway, okay, do I have to make weight? You know, I mean, that's just how he is. Um, he was fifth in the state last year. I'm excited to see where he is, uh, especially against some of these other tough guys. Landon Muth from Becca, uh, one of two Becca guys here in the weight class, but he was eighth in the state. You know, quietly, Becca's – they're going to be one of the top teams in the state. They're, I mean, obviously, I know that's that's such a bold statement, Becca being a good <laughs> wrestling team. They're, they're but, quietly going to be good. Is that that is extra bold? After uh, you can shut your mouth right now, Dustin. Okay, you're not okay. a red girl on the show. I will I'll evict you right out of the show real quick. Okay. Waynesburg, you know, Waynesburg was the talk of the town for the last couple of years. I'm telling you, Becca, though, it, you know, they're 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 rejuvenating, if you will. Um, I think I think even by Becca's standards what, is what you're getting at. Even correct. by Becca's standards, hot, you know, and expectations. This has a group that could be. This is a group that could be really special, and um, I think you know Becca could be ranked number one in the state in AAA. We'll see. I don't know. That's that's your territory, not mine. Well, Becca's B team would probably be a top ten team in the state. <laughs> no, you're, that's you're, the way it looks. You're you're not wrong. You're not. You're absolutely not wrong in that sense. Uh, I definitely think that they they would be um, depth. You know they have they have a lot of depth there, and kids want to be on that team, regardless of whether they get into the lineup or not. You see some kids that wait two three years to get in the lineup, and all of a sudden they go on a run. Right. We we've seen that with a variety of different wrestlers from from Becca. Um, if we go up to 152, Eric Gibson from Bishop McCourt, he is your number three seed. He was seventh in the uh, in the Super Thirty Two last year, but that was up at one sixty. So Eric is actually coming down to fifty two. Um, I'm very, I'm not saying I'm nervous to see how he is at fifty two. I, I just I know that's you know he's going to be coming down in weight, right? I mean that's it, you never know how that that cut's going to go. Um, you know he's third, probably one of the biggest names to not have a state title. He beat two state champions last year. He beat. Uh, AJ Corrado and Grant McKay last year, um, but was ineligible because of that transfer from Forest Hills to Bishop McCourt, um, two-time state medalist. Michael Dugan, a guy who we saw him and, and Gibson go head-to-head -head, uh, at True Power, and Gibson kind of turned it on and, and ended up winning, I believe it was 13-5. Um, and, and Dugan is a guy who comes in as a number 32 seed. He was third last year as a sophomore. So, you know, I think the there is a gap there, but Michael Dugan is not that far off from, I think, a, a potential like top 12 finish here at the Super 32. Uh, but those are only two seated wrestlers here from Pennsylvania. Uh, it's definitely thinning out as we get up to the bigger uh, weights. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be a trend as we keep going. Now, now these two guys having wrestled, I mean, Gibson just looked next level. You know, my, Michael Dugan ha has, has gone out and he's tried to find the best competition he can get. Uh, Eric Gibson – you know, was so quick and so powerful and so technical. And I think, you know, watching those two wrestle True Power, he just looked like he has a little bit of an edge and a little bit of hunger that that's driving him after everything that happened with him last year. And this will be a, a really good thing for him. I mean, for a guy, so he's the number three seed. I think Willie's got him at number six or so in his national rankings. But this is a kid who, who who I think he needs to go out. He needs a tournament win in some way or another. I mean, you mentioned he he hasn't gotten a tournament win at, at the at the state level. Didn't get a chance last year. I believe he's going to to get that. You know, next next spring. 
But uh, I, I would love to see him go out and, and get a big win in, in this tournament and really, truly announce his presence on the national stage. He's there. He's well-recognized. But I still think it's, you know, even though his results are good as a wrestler, it's still based on more potential than results so far. Yeah, I, I would. I, I mean, I could I could agree with that. I mean, he's a guy who, you know, doesn't have that one title, you know, to his name that you're like, man, like this guy's he's here, you know, um, to be honest with you, he's wrestled his best at the surge. Uh, in, in my opinion, as a freshman, he had a loaded bracket, ended up beating Kenny Kaiser, um, who, who, you know, they, they went back and forth that, that year. Um, really, you know, he, he's just kind of, I, I don't know. I'm not saying he's underperformed cause he has not, he's just been in some weird weights. He's had some yeah. weird things happen to him. You know, the, the move, um, you know, that, that whole stuff, you know, that, that affects somebody. Right. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's affected his wrestling because clearly he, he turned it up against Michael Dugan. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, Dustin. I think he is just poised for like a big breakout performance. Fargo, he was a double all American, uh, wrestled at 52 and 60, uh, in freestyle and Greco Roman. So he, he's right there, right. He's right there with the, with the best of them. Um, and it would be, I mean, I think it would be great for him to, to, you know, come away with a, a super 32 belt here. That's, that's for, for damn sure. Uh, he's got the goods to do it too. I mean, from, from what I saw wrestling Michael Dugan a few weeks ago, he, he, he looks like he's primed to, to make a run. Uh, Michael Dugan, I don't know where Eric Gibson stands on, on the weight issue, but I'm, I'm about 95% sure we'll see Michael Dugan again at 152 um, in the high school season as well. Long kid. Uh, when he's at his best, he's really pushing the pace, and he's really creating some. He's really um, using that that length to his advantage. Uh, I, I think what what you're going to see from him is to try to turn it on and try to finish and try to be a little bit more aggressive and attack oriented. I'm I'm hoping we get to see that a rematch at the surge. Uh, you know, Gibson's registered. Dugan has not yet, but I'm I'm hoping after Super 32, he he gets registered because I think that could be a, another good match between them and and kind of see where the where they are in their development. Uh, a bunch of unseated guys here that that to to take note: Alan Alexander from Pope John Paul the second. He was six in the state last year in Dubway. He's unseated, but he's there. Uh, Andrew Harmon from Becca, another one of those you know, Landon Muth type guys that finished sixth, seventh, eighth in the state for Becca. Uh, Harmon was, was seventh last year. I think he's going to be in the mix. Bodie Morgan from Trinity. He's a sophomore now last year as a freshman had a good year. Uh, but I was very impressed with him throughout. Uh, he won the journeyman in the, the C bracket, uh, which just means he was in the A was like the top ranked guys. And he was in the C one, but he wrestled well. He wrestled. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a, pushover tournament i mean he wrestled tough guys there um and caden wagner from lewisburg who is a, a fifth place finisher last year he's also in the weight class so a number of guys here that i think uh you know are going to push the pace will be interesting to see if any of them are able to get over the hump um and, and get on the podium uh, gavin priest is a guy who i'm looking forward to seeing as a freshman same as uh, mark gray from kiski area uh and keep an eye on sean taylor from west allegheny uh, those west allegheny guys are yeah, they, they they train well and they're they're tough. So, um, but fifty two overall, you know, not nearly as deep as some of our other weights. And I think just the the, the further you climb up, the harder it is to find depth of, of competition that that elite level competition. So it's just a a natural thing. These lower weights are just absolutely loaded, and then eventually, as they work their way up uh, through the varsity ranks, they they start to disperse a little bit. So 160, speaking of big-time guys, and, and his name is Levi Haynes, and I think we all know him by now. You know, Levi, number one wrestler in the nation at 160. Uh, he's your top seed. He's a three-time state finalist, was a state champion last year after finishing second the last two years previously. He was a runner-up at the Super 32 at 138 pounds. So now up to 160, and he looks big at 160. We saw him at True Power wrestle Tyler Lillard. Um, and man, he, he turned it up. He turned it on. He's a, a cadet world team member. I mean, that's, that's the type of wrestler we're talking about here. Right. Um, he, he is just really, uh, jumped levels, right? He, he really has. And, uh, I'm excited to see Levi in, in you know, we saw him at flows. Who's number one, had, had a, a nice win there, but this is something different, right? You know, winning a belt at the super 32 is kind of like completes the the 
you know, the Trinity award for him, if you will. I mean, he, he's won a, a state title, you know, he, he made a world team. Uh, now he needs a super 32 belt. So, and I think he's ready to do that. I mean, he's going to Penn state, right? I mean, you don't, you don't go to Penn state and, and not show up with a belt. I, I don't think. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if he, if he didn't uh, put it that way, I've, especially after having reached the, the final tier last year, uh, again, like you said, won't make it the jump from one, 38 to 160 his expectation as a next level is to continue growing and eventually maybe be you could see him start his career at Penn State in the 165 range mm. but I don't think he expects to be there I think he there he and they are looking at maybe 174 184 so the the growth of Levi Haynes is, is not over by any means he looks very he looks jacked for for 160 you know 22 yeah. pounds up from last year and last year he made you know he, he made another jump up so uh, I, I think Levi constant growth from him, you know, I think before, before he made the world team, let's just put that before he won a state title as well. He was twice in the finals before he actually got over the top. Uh, I don't think he was in that elite elite category of college prospects. The, that, that list of guys that you can be pretty sure are winning an NCAA title. But now he has worked himself there. He's been just just shy of that elite level. Now I think he's made that jump into that level. And I think if you could kind of carve out a prototype recruit for Kale Sanderson and Penn State, it would be Levi Haynes. It would be the guy who's driving two hours from Adams County to M2 so he can train there. Him and his dad, Ken, are, are making that drive two to three times a week so he can get that top-level training. You talk about commitment, loving being there, loving the process of wrestling. That All of that is Levi Haynes. He uh, doesn't really have any holes in his game. Pace setter, offensive, technique is, is fantastic, can, can chain wrestle. I mean, uh, I'm very impressed by Levi, obviously, and I think, um, I think he, he looked really good at 162. No question for me making the jump from 138 to 160. Yeah, and I, I agree with you with the growing. I don't think we've seen the end of his growing spurt here uh, for for Levi. I think he's going to continue to could, uh, get bigger as as he gets into college. One guy who I'm really and, looking and for, Jeff. He's he's never going to stop improving either. No, just course, lastly, right. you know, like even if he weren't in that elite elite level now, which I do think he is, he's going to be a guy who's going to make a ton of progress not only this year but when he gets into that Penn State room. Yeah, no, you're you're right. I mean, you look at like a guy like David Taylor. I mean, there's a reason why he goes M two. I mean, you know, DT's a guy who who's continued to get better every single week, every single month, every single year. I mean, he's he's just improved. So Levi, I think, is is kind of cut from that same cloth. Jared Kessler uh, at the number six seed. I'm kind of surprised to see him here because I know he was dealing with some injuries. Um, so I'm hoping this is accurate and that he is he is going to be there. He's the six seed. Uh, another guy who just has been there and and been so close and kind of like Eric Gibson where, you know, ha, has really performed well at the surge. He, he won a surge title um, as a freshman beating a, a whole slew of, of state medalists. Um, fourth in the state the last two years, tough weight classes. He he almost beat Rocco Welsh. In fact, they were wrestling and uh, they wrestled into overtime in the state tournament. I don't know if you remember that, Dustin, but Rocco kind of thought he lost. And then, and then he realized, oh, no, I didn't. And he went back and ended up beating Kessler. Um, you know, two guys that are, are very familiar with each other. And Dom Federici from Wyoming Seminary, he is the number 26 seed here at 160 pounds. Re he must have really put on some weight because he wrestled Jude Swisher at the Redemption Duel. And, um, man, he, he, you know, he was big, but I, I didn't think he was 160 big. So he must have put on some weight here. Um, outside of that, it's it's a little bit – smaller and like we just talked about it's it's going to thin out sam beckett from from souderton um you know he's I, he's at the hill school now i believe and i don't know if he switched back or not to souderton but he was a national prep fourth place finisher last year um nick nettleton from exeter i'm excited about him and travis stipitich from north allegheny i think he he can win a few matches but really the talk here is levi haynes and and hopefully jared kessler I, i'm really hoping jared's there uh he's a pit recruit so um you know, I'm thinking this year is, is going to be one of his years where he, he's really going to push for that state championship. And, and just has been on the wrong side of the margin. The, the, the margin between winning and losing, like the match you described with Rocco Welsh, is, is super thin. 
And sometimes the better kid doesn't get through, not saying he was better, but just a tough way to go out. And I think, again, another kid, I think that the results, the, the podium finishes don't tell the full story on how good he is and how good he can be. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. I, I think that's the reason why Pitt wanted him, because they know they see that potential for him. Um, speaking of Rocco Welsh, 170 um, is is where Rocco Welsh is. Speaking about growing, you know, my gosh, Rocco Welsh, I can remember him as a 113 pounder in eighth grade and, and 126, and all of a sudden now he's, he's up to 170. Um, you know, Rocco is a guy who, like his teammate Mac Church, recently made a commitment um, he's going to be going to Ohio State. So, again, pressure's off. You you already made your college commitment. Um, he's the number two seed behind Matt Singleton uh, from Georgia, and uh, this should be a really fun weight class. The reason being is because I think Rune Lawrence, man, Thane, if it's anything like his brother Thane, Thane made his money at the Super 32. My gosh, he, he just – I can remember having kids ask me, where the heck is Frazier? Where, where is this at, you know? Brune is a guy who won a state title as a freshman, um, you know, was was a, a Powerade uh, runner up. And, and you you look at uh, or I'm sorry, Powerade champion. You look at all this trajectory that he's had throughout, you know, this past year. He is he has really come on to his own. And, uh, man, I'd love to see him and Rocco uh, bang heads here at, at 170 pounds. But then you throw in a guy like Nolan Lear, who's the number 14 seed. Um Obviously, a guy who's very impressive, two-time state medalist, third last year, fifth the year prior. Um, and then, you know, you, you even go down further down the list, Dom D'Augustino from Interboro, who we saw at True Power. He wrestled really well there, beating Jake Jones from Saucon Valley. He's the number 29 seed, um, finishing sixth in the state last year. So, really, th- you know, when you look at the, the numbers here, four guys that I think, you know, Rocco and Rune are in kind of one tier, and then, Nolan and, and Dominic, I think, could be in another one. Um, and then you even throw in a, a guy like Carter Gill, uh, who was a two-time state medalist, older brother of Louis Gill, you know, being up at 170. That, that's, that's a big – that's a long way up there too. So, um, again, this is a good test for, for all these guys, Rocco Welsh especially, to see if he can claim that number one spot. Well, you see – you look at Rocco Welsh and you see a lot of twos next to his name, two seed – two uh, second place finishes at States, a second place finishes super 32. He's another guy trying to get to the top of the mountain here and he'll do it as the number two seed at 170. Rune Lawrence. I mean, anytime you have a kid who can come in as a freshman, I know he's not an ordinary freshman, but, and win a state tournament in those upper weight classes, you can see how special uh, he is and how special he can be. He's got a nice, even temperament to him and you can see it in tournaments like this. Uh, and then just Dom Diagostino. I mean, I was really impressed. Uh, at at uh, True Power a few weeks ago, to be able to overcome Jake Jones's strength is not anything to sneeze at. Jake Jones uh, has difference-making strengths, and Dom Diagostino was was able to to wrestle that with that, hang with that, and win that match. Right, and and, and you're you're right. When I looked at that match on paper, I'm thinking this is going to be a physical physical match here, and Diagostino was just, I mean. He, he was more physical, right? I mean, he, he just he just looked like he was he was in a fight, you know, in a brawl, and, and he came out on top of that one. Um, you know, another guy, Kevin Oliveria from Mount Manheim Township. I know you're familiar with him. You know, big freestyle guy, and, uh, you know, he, he's kind of transitioning towards a, a folk style, uh, you know, kind of wrestling is not coming that easy to him maybe at the, the folk style level. But, man, if, if he can – Get everything in order. I think he could be a problem. Uh, I know he wrestled pretty tough at the Super Regional. He had Alejandro uh, Herrera the first round. So, you know, obviously a, a tough draw for him. But I think he could probably uh, win a few matches here as well. Well, I, I I don't remember who the coach was, but at the District 3 tournament, I was familiar with Oliveria. But uh, basically a, a coach, I think it might have been Chris Haynes from Gettysburg, said more or less this is one of the best athletes he's ever seen wow. in, a, in a wrestler. Wow. So take, take that, I mean, take that in consideration. I mean, athleticism, you know, it, it, it's not much without, without technique, but in some of these matches, I mean, some of these scramble drills, some of these situations where it's about, uh, it's about your hips and your feet and, and, and being athletic. I mean, it, maybe he has a chance to surprise you because of that. Right. And, and just because it is that, you know, freestyle 
focus that has been where he's at. So if, if you're saying that he's the best athlete, you know, whoever, whatever the coach was, that that's saying a lot uh, about him and his potential. If you go up to 182, you know, this is, this is kind of an interesting weight here because we got Matt Furman from Cannon Mac, who is the number 16 seed and Brian Finnerty of Thomas Jefferson. Uh, those two are very familiar, familiar with each other. They've wrestled, I think a dozen times. Um, he's a 26 seed. Two guys from the Whippeal who are very familiar with each other. Um, you know, it, it's this is where we're not. We don't have anyone in the top ten. You know, uh, in the seeds here, you, you've got a really deep weight class um, between. You look at the top six here. Uh, just a lot of depth here. Matt Furman, I think, has been kind of like what I mentioned about Connor Hare. Furman is a guy who wants to wrestle every week, a- anywhere, any weight. It doesn't matter. Like he's just he's down the wrestle. Um, and wrestle hard and wrestle really well. So he's going to take some losses, but he's also going to get some pretty big wins. Um, and I think this is a, a big test for him to say, okay, this is what I'm going to go into uh, this season. And, and this is my confidence level going into the season. I think, you know, he, he's a guy who, who wants to, to do well. And as he starts doing well, it's just that momentum just keeps on going and going. Finnerty, on the other hand, you know, Eric, that's one of Eric's, favorite wrestlers to watch because he looks so cool calm and collective out there on the mat um he's another one under the radar i would say um but has some quality wins so you you look at where these two guys are um you know it, it's going to be interesting to see where where they end up um you know in addition to some other big names here landon caldwell from Sagertown, uh jagger gray from trinity uh and tucker hogan from daniel boone tucker hogan as a, a Fargo All American, I'm very surprised to see him not in the top uh, the top 32 seeds here. I'm not sure if that was an oversight or maybe he's not wrestling in in the Super 32. And Willie knows something I don't. It wouldn't be the first time. Um, but he beat Jagger Gray at True Power this year. Tucker Hogan's probably one of the the best uh, wrestlers in his class, and and he lost to Finnerty at the Super Regional. So I'm sure he'd like to get his hands on him again, uh, get a little redemption. I, I think Tucker Hogan's upside is tremendous. And, you know, again, just as I mentioned with Rune Lawrence, trying to trying to make that postseason run uh, as a freshman at, at the high, at the higher weights is just a tough thing to do. But Tucker Hogan looked really good. He looked great a couple weeks ago against Jagger Gray. His length and the, and the size of his arms, the, 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 the wrestler that comes to mind when I look at Tucker Hogan uh, is Cole Urban. Long, yeah. long arms, long frame. It's just a lot to try to contend with at a weight at 182 where, you know, you see body, all different types of body types. Uh, Jagger Gray, I, I just don't think really matched up well with that a few weeks ago, but I think Jagger Gray, Jagger Gray has been wrestling in everything. You know, I think he's going to turn a corner here pretty soon. And, and I think he'll be comfortable at 182. Of course, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's just not an option for him uh, competing in Pennsylvania, but uh, but I think I think those two guys have a chance, and I and I really like T- Tucker Hogan to to beat to beat somebody good. And if if he's not in it, I mean you have him as being unseated and in it still. But um, I think the best is yet to come. I think you're looking at a state medalist at the least for Tucker Hogan this year. Yeah, I would agree with that uh, analysis. And just seeing what he was did at Fargo this past year, and then watching him at True Power, I was very impressed with with his development, um, especially after last year. I can remember when he was an eighth grader at the Surge knocking off you know some big names so you know he, he's he, i agree with you state medalist at the at the least let's go up to 195 pounds where colby franklin from wyman seminary is the number three seed now th- this is a i mean you got three you know maybe four of the top guys in the nation um maybe even pound for pound here at at 195 pounds chef shoemate uh, from ohio rylan rogers um, he's there and Colby Franklin is number three. Colby's been, you know, I know he was at Penn state. He was at Iowa. Um, everyone wants him, you know, and for good reason, the, the guy knows how to wrestle, right? He was a state runner up when he was at, um, at Bishop McCourt. And, and now he's, he's at Wyoming seminary where, um, you know, he's really excelled, right? And he's really, he's, he's going to another level. And I, I apologize, not Bishop McCourt, St. Joseph Catholic Academy is where he was at um, when he was a freshman, him and Zach Whitmer. I, I think Colby Franklin is, you know, he, he's been there. He's been close. Uh, Fargo, All-American a number of times. 
it's you know go back to that Eric Gibson type thing where you've you've got a lot of twos beside your name you know what what are you going to win right and I think him coming away with a Super 32 belt here would really solidify him as one of the best guys in the nation because I can remember him coming up through the youth ranks I mean he he's I mean coming from Du Bois like he's he was one of the best recruits a heavier recruit coming up through the uh, through the ranks and I think I'm not saying he hasn't reached that potential um, but I think he needs to get that quality win. I think he needs to get that quality championship. This could be it, right? Um, being runner up to Nick Feldman a number of times, you know, you you, you sometimes want to win, right? You, you can w- get second at all the best tournaments, but you still want to win, right? And I think Kobe Franklin's coming to the Super 32 to, to get a belt. He's in that same category. Like Rocco Welsh, Eric Gibson are in that category. Guys who have accomplished so much, but the, but still looking to turn a corner. And Colby Franklin's in that category too, you know, just being one of the best guys in every bracket that he's ever been in. Uh, I think his turn's coming to try to be the number one guy. And uh, it's a tough field to try to get that done. But certainly, you know, with the schools he's looking at, with his accomplishments and what what his potential is, um, he's he's definitely right there. I mean, no doubt about it. No doubt that he's right there. I mean, Rogers is is a guy who's who's been – you know, high uh, a number of years uh, in the national ranking. Same with Seth um, Shoemaker. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he, he's, you know, is, is climbing Mount Everest here. He's in, he's in the mix. Um, but this would be a really statement win for him. Other guys in the weights: Quinn Collins um, from from Central Bucks East. He was a statement house last year, finishing sixth. Aiden Height from Chambersburg and Johnny Miller from Exeter uh, round out the other uh, guys there. Quinn Collins is probably the bigger name there, being a state medalist. Um, you know, they only, I think Willie only seeded out to 15 with, with 195. So, you know, those are, those are guys that I think are going to battle. When you get to these, these heavier weights and the field uh, thins out, I, I think you're really going to see, um, you know, you're really going to see some of these guys excel and get on the podium um, just because they're, they're, they're in smaller weights, uh, smaller brackets and uh, they're, they're quality wrestlers, right? 220 pounds. Speaking of, of thinning out, Pennsylvania only has Hayden Linkerhoff from Corey um, in the the top 15 of the seeds here. He's number 14. Um, Linkerhoff of Corey, seventh in the state last year. He's going to to Bucknell. We saw him wrestle Caden Rogers at True Power. Caden Rogers, you know, did what Caden Rogers does, and that's win and physically winning. Um, you know, he, he kind of took it to Hayden Linkerhoff, but I think Hayden's better off because of it. And I think, you know, he took a lot away from that match despite, you know, kind of a lopsided score there. Um, Caden Rogers is going to Lehigh. He's one of the best in the nation for a reason. So no shame in that. Um, and and there's, there's some other guys here that I, I'm excited to see. And, and I'll kind of let you, Dustin, talk a little bit more about them. But, you know, this is, again, where you're going to see some guys that maybe you're not too familiar with uh, earn, earn a top eight finish. Yeah, I mean, this is a weight class. 220 is always a bit of a wild card, right? There's, there's, you know, that's one weight class where I can remember, you know, let me just throw a name, the name Brighton Barr out there for you. Do you remember Brighton from, oh, from Mechanicsburg? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. You know, and, and, and you've seen some other guys who, um, uh, Adam Geiger is a kid from Trinity who just raw athleticism at 220 pounds can take you a long way. Um, so the, it's, it's a weight class that kind of o- opens up because of that. Hayden Linkerhoff, I mean, no shame, you know, Caden Rogers, big, strong, fast, technical, not a whole lot. Hayden Linkerhoff could do with him a few weeks ago. Um, Gettysburg. I I, I love seeing Gettysburg and, and Chambersburg and some of these, you know, taking guys down there and putting them in a position to get beat up a little bit. Sam Rodriguez, when, when Sam Rodriguez is at his best, he's a pretty good wrestler at the very least, a really key important part of Gettysburg, which they'll be right there in district three contention again, but consistency has been an issue. And I think Chris Haynes may be looking to try to knock some of that inconsistency out of him uh, coming down to a tournament like this. So he'll, he'll be interesting. I mean, if he wrestles his best, he, he's a capable kid, long, strong athletic. So yeah, we'll see that the two twenties are, are kind of a hard, hard group to try to predict. Yeah, no, they, they they are, and I I I agree with you with with Rodriguez. Inconsistent, but when he's on, he's on. Um, but he took some losses last year where you're like, how how do you how do you lose that? You just beat this guy, right? There, I mean, I know trying to rank him last year was like, 
it was hard because you're like, you beat this guy, but you lost to this guy, you know? So we're going to throw you somewhere in the middle. Um, Eli Mackle from, from Waynesburg. He's, he's kind of continuing to get bigger and bigger. Um, it, it, just curious to see how he is at 220 um, because I can remember him wrestling 52, 60 a few years back. Um, Nick Pavlicheco from State College, another young kid from State College, M2. Uh, I know a lot of people are really, really high on him. He had a, a good year last year, but kind of in a weird weight class uh, in the Northwest Regional. Bryce Rafferty from Brookville, another you know big, bigger Brookville guy. Kobe Whitehill, Nathan Taylor. Bryce Rafferty, you know, obviously there's something in the water there in Brookville where um, those big guys, they just, they know how to wrestle. So um, I think all of those guys that are registered at 220 are going to be in the mix with Hayden um, to knock off, a, a, you know, some guys and, and actually, you know, potentially get on the podium. So, uh, and the same could be said about 285. So if you go up to 285, Matt Cruz um, from Easton is the sixth seed. He was fifth in the state last year. We saw him at True Power. He beat DJ Moring from from um, Wyman Seminary. I think Cruz is just he he's got it. You know, like last year, him and Sean Kenny went back and forth. I think he's in a position now. He's committed to UPenn. I think he's just comfortable. He's he's ready to rock and roll. He wrestles in literally everything every weekend. I think he's wrestled, and that's why he's the number six. Uh, seat here at 285 pounds in a in a pretty deep weight class chase horn um, from georgia is is really the the top dog here um cruz though i think is is going to make a push there for the the top three finish um and zach evans from chambersburg i'm pretty big on him uh he was on our our team at the pa um at the national freestyle duels for team pa power impressed with the way he wrestled um and leo mazika from faith christian academy another one where Leo's been around for a long time. I feel like him and Old Durfer have been around for like seven years. Um, you know, he's coming up to 285 from 220. So, again, interested to see how he does. And Gavin Thompson from Brockway, I know he's registered for the surge, so another guy who wants to get that mat time and really get a, a lot of matches under his belt before the season. Well, I tell you what, the, the 285 weight class last year, at every level you went to was a just an absolute grind. You look at some of the guys who, you know, weren't state state champions. Uh, Matt Cruz, if, if Sean Kinney, you know, the fr- the freshman last year from Nazareth, uh, if he's not there, I mean, who knows where where Cruz would be in the podium on the podium at all those different spots along the way. Couldn't get out of the way of, of him. Uh, you look at Isaiah Vance and Nate Schoen. I mean, these were really high level heavyweights last year, and I do believe. You know, Matt Cruz with his you know, broad shoulders, athletic, he's wrestled and everything, as you mentioned. Um, I think he can be a real factor in, in a tournament like this. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Uh, Zach Evans, you're high on him. He was a Fargo All-American. He's making the jump up now to 285 pounds. And Matt Menser is taking both of his big guys uh, down here, Aiden Height as well. They both went out to Fargo. They both <laughs> made that bus ride home from Fargo back to Chambersburg. Zach Evanson got a little hardware, but he, you know, given that he's making this transition and he, his resume um, doesn't really scream contender. Uh, he's going to be a guy like uh, um, who's the Bermudian Springs heavyweight last year. Riley Robel from McDevitt also made that leap up to 285. Right. Zach Evans won't be quite as dramatic as those two. Um, but I do think that he's got what it takes to be a podium kid there and I think he's got what it takes you know he's he's got that smaller wrestler mindset for 285 that can be problematic yeah no I mean just watching him in Jersey you know Zach Evans I I agree I think he's he's just he's he's definitely going to win a lot of matches because of that um Dustin this is called the power hour we are at a power hour and a half so we, we we we're going we're we're drinking a little bit more than we should all right so we need to we we need to cut it off you know you're you're cut off now um i'll go through the the super 32 schedule friday or weigh-ins high school if you got the vip early weigh-ins it's between three and four um then regular weigh-ins are between six and seven on friday then saturday you get up nice and early and you start wrestling at 8 a.m um and you wrestle all the way through and then sunday um you start wrestling at 8 a.m again um Man, that's that's a long day. I, those are long days in that 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 Coliseum. But um, happy to to be back in the the Greensboro uh, Coliseum there. So um, 
Thanks, Dustin. That was a lot of fun. I think you you may have frozen halfway through because I don't see you moving on the screen that's on Rockfin. So you may have been just frozen in a weird face like for the last 20 minutes. Um, so if that's the case, I apologize to fans that had to look at your just your face not moving for a long time. But it was it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, Dustin. There's not a lot of um, ways that I can freeze that are favorable for me. I, I, I recommend like, like the sun during an eclipse. You can't, I wouldn't recommend staring at me for too long. Mm. Could go blind or turn into stone if, if you know, so hundred percent. Of course you can always check out PA power wrestling on Rockfin. We got previews from all the weight classes up through, I think 145 we're up to right now. I got a, a bunch of other ones to do here. Uh, we got all the list of wrestlers that are registered and seated, not not updated to Willie Seeds, but you can see those on Rockfin as well if you go to Matt Scouts. Um, and Dustin, you've you've got something coming up too that you wanted to mention, correct? Yeah, well, I mean it's a totally off the off the cuff, but Penn Live Wrestling Podcast is coming. It basically, I'll be um, I'll be teaming up with Dave Heckard, who coached at Cumberland Valley for for 17 years, who just stepped down recently because of the you know, some things that he's working through with his, with his family and stuff, but he and I will be getting together every single week just to talk about district three. So if you're ever curious about what's going on on the district three wrestling scene, that's the aim is to try to bring you up to speed uh, in podcast format starting next month. So I'm excited well, about that. I, I, if you, if you need a guest to come on, you know, who better than a district three native than Jeff Upson, right? I'm just saying, you know, if old, optimal. Old, old Heckard wants, wants, uh, some company, you know, some CD Cumber Valley, you know, mixing there. So, and then throw in a guy from Enola, wherever you're from, Susquehanna, Susquehanna. I don't know. All Big, the above, Jeff, all the above. You're, you're, you're on the, you're from the river. That's, that's all I can say. Yeah. Dustin, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and, you know, thank you for tuning in here tonight on the PA power hour. You can catch us on replay on Rockfin, um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Um, and, and we got, and don't forget to sign up for the surge. You know, we, we forgot to mention that the surge registration is still open, uh, November 6th in state college at the C3 sports complex. It's going to be a great time. You're going to come win a hammer. We've got a high school boys, high school girls and junior high division. So, um, you know, make sure you get registered, uh, sooner rather than later and, uh, come win a hammer. So Dustin, great talking to you and, uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to it. Invite me back if I if I'm not frozen by then. I, you may have to be unfrozen. We may have to to call call uh, somebody to to unfreeze you. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll work on it. There's nothing you can do about your face, but we can work on maybe unfreezing you. All right. I love it. All right. Sounds good, Dustin. Appreciate it.